Hi, everybody. It's time for an instant reaction. We do these on Sunday, sometimes really late, sometimes semi-late. So there's three or four games that um, yeah, I have kind of something off the top of my head I want to talk about. I, I first want to talk about Green Bay's loss, the ugly loss to, to Detroit. Um, <clears throat> there was a really brief shot before the game. I texted the buddy on this. There was about a three-second shot of Aaron Rodgers before the game, and he just looked pissy. <laughs> um, and years and years ago, I was watching Peyton Manning face Brady in Foxborough during a snowstorm. And I remember the game was on CBS, and they took a shot of Peyton Manning before the game. And Peyton Manning looked so cold and so uncomfortable. And I thought, New England and Brady are winning this game. Brady was over there with the gloves on. He played in this terrible weather in Foxborough forever. Peyton Manning grew up in the South, played in a dome. So I saw Aaron Rodgers before the game, and I thought he just looked like he was in a bad mood, a foul mood. And let's be honest, the Bears made a move at the trade deadline. The Vikings, a team that already thumped Aaron week one, added a great tight end. Aaron said the right things. He fell on the sword during the week. Hey, we tried to make a move. But I think Aaron knows they just don't have the personnel in their division. I, I think Detroit, honestly, um, has better offensive personnel, better offensive line for sure. And so, and the body language, which has never been a great strength for Aaron. I think, I think teammates feed off that. They see it. Listen, I've, told my kids this before. If my son's in a bad mood, it's very easy for me to spot it and address it. My daughter's always got a smile on her face. Some people can hide it. Some people um, can just burrow through it. Um, Aaron's one of those people that when he's in a bad mood, you can see it. Um, and I thought his team had no juice and no energy. He didn't play inspired football. And that is part of the criticisms I've always had of Aaron Rodgers, is that I don't think he's a great leader. I think he's a great talent. Um, you know, we've seen this in acting for years. There's some great actors out there, but they're a disaster on the set. They're very, very difficult to work with. They're just brilliant. And um, I thought, you know, you can keep blaming the general manager, and I would have made a move on Chase Claypool, but I don't think really Green Bay's issues are solvable. I think um, Aaron is not a mentor. This is, as we predicted, not going to be a team that he grows old with. He knows it. He wants to win now. He's paid handsomely to win now. And I thought that game was just Aaron at his worst. He had a few of those games with Mike McCarthy at the end where he had just decided this shit's not going to work. Um, I'm not going to be a great ally of Mike. I want Mike McCarthy out of here. Now, I don't think he wants Matt LaFleur out of there, but that game was all about Aaron, his mood, um, the trading deadline week. Green Bay doesn't take a big swing. It's a conservative small town. It's sort of without an owner how they roll. You know, I said this on Fox last week, late last week, you know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, not having an owner, I didn't see as a huge liability because sometimes owners are meddling. But now you got Stan Kroenke, um, you've got your Hunt family, you've got the people in Buffalo, a lot of these owners now, Jeffrey Lurie in Philadelphia, they're deal makers. They are deal makers. And Green Bay doesn't have an owner. Mark Murphy... Um, I guess plays it, but I, I think the no owner hurts Green Bay now because for all the occasional meddling and the ego you deal with, with the billionaire owner, they get stuff done. And if they want stuff, they'll pay for stuff. Green Bay just doesn't have it. They don't have the personnel. The season's predictable. Let's talk about the Bears and Miami. That was as good a loss as any team in this league has had this year. Yes, Chicago's defense has some leaks. Well, they've moved off of Rokon Smith and Robert Quinn. It's not the same defense as it was two weeks ago. It's not as talented. But they did it to get draft picks and pour a lot of their draft capital into the offensive side of the football. Um, I, I said last week, I think you look at Tua and you look at Justin Fields. Justin Fields, when you, when you looked at those two in the same game, Fields is bigger, stronger, better arm, hyper-athletic. 
But Tua, is there ever a deep ball he doesn't underthrow? <laughs> like one? He underthrows all deep balls. But Tua is a year ahead of Justin Fields in the rebuild, right? So he is now got the perfect left tackle. He's got two big time receivers. Um, they've made several moves for him to make the offense more dynamic. That will be this offseason for Chicago. But you had to feel absolutely great if you were a Bears fan and watching Justin Fields and that big frame making plays. Uh, and I'll give um, Luke Getzey, the offensive coordinator for the Bears, a ton of credit. He really leans into what Justin Fields at this point can do. He's very, very mobile. Now, he made a great throw into the end zone to Darnell Mooney for a touchdown. But I really like what Chicago is doing, their coaching staff with Fields. They know his strengths. Uh, he's not a guy that's going to sit back and, and go to his fourth option. Not right now. By the way, the Bears don't have a fourth option. They've got about two, two and a half. But I thought that was a great loss. I mean, you'd rather win that game. But Miami is a year ahead in the rebuild for Tua than the Bears are the rebuild for Justin Fields. And there were some wow moments. There were multiple wow moments for Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears. I think you got the right coaches, the right coordinators, and I think you have the right quarterback. Cross your fingers on health. So the Jets beat the Buffalo Bills. We know the Buffalo Bills are better than the New York Jets. But something that really has jumped out to me, and I've made this reference several times on the Bills, is they do remind me of Mike Tyson. They win a lot of fights by knockout. But, you know, Tyson, the later he got in his career, the richer he got in his career, um, the less time he spent in the gym in his career. He didn't have much of a jab. Um, you know, he, he was going for the knockout. And this is what I've spotted with Buffalo this year is that they don't do a lot of little things well. They bail on the running game quickly. They're looking for the home run ball deep down the field, and they're absurdly reliant on Josh Allen. And this is where Sean McDermott, who I think is a good coach, but this is where a defensive coach hurts you. How many years is Josh Allen going to be primarily the run game for the team? Andy Reid always seems to get, always seems to get, Patrick Mahomes, a fairly consistent run game. I mean, Andy Reid and the Chiefs have rebuilt their defense, their O-line, and their receiving core in three of four years. They're still trying to get Josh Allen to be able to hand it off consistently and somebody else pick up first downs. So I think the Bills right now, can they knock out punch their way to a championship? It's certainly possible. But boy, the margins get thin when you're playing Kansas City and then Cincinnati and then Baltimore and then potentially a Philadelphia or a San Francisco. You got to do the little things well. And I just increasingly don't think Buffalo does. Um, and listen, they're a young team with a ton of energy. Uh, they've got an incredibly deep front seven stars in every unit defensively. I get it. They're young. They're kind of cocky. They blow people out. But... That's not what the playoffs are going to look like. And for all the talent, they have nothing so far to show for it. We all know professional athletes care about what they look like. And as you know, I care about what I look like. Right now, I've been wearing a lot of Cuts clothing. I love this thing right now. Every cut shirt is designed to provide a perfectly tailored look. If you want a, a long sleeve Henley, no problem. A short sleeve crew neck, they've got it. Cuts has everything you want. And I've got all of it and I wear all of it. Right now, 15% off your first order. 15% off first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash Colin. Cuts, C-U-T-S. Look them up. I got a closet full of their stuff and I love it. One other game, Seattle's win over Arizona. Um, you know, I don't know why I think about this. By the way, the Herd draft pick, Hazy IPA. I'm going to have a sip. I don't know why I think about this, but this is something I've thought about my entire life. That 
I guess it's vanity, is that I want to age well. I try to eat right. I work out. Um, I think it's always really cool when you see somebody that's like 70, 75 years old. They're fit. They're happy. Uh, I think Pete Carroll's inspiring. There are times his coaching lacks details and drives me nuts. But the guy is 70 years old. He's going 1,000 miles an hour, a smile on his face. And this is another, it's the second time in Seattle he has built this fast, long, young, and athletic defense. And I think even Vegas, you know, Vegas gets a beat on everybody after about three, four games. I think Vegas is struggling with Seattle. <laughs> I don't think they know what to do with it. Seattle, once again, got points against Arizona. They are a better team than Arizona. Uh, if it wasn't for a Geno Smith red zone mistake, they would have blown them out. Um, yes, Geno's limited. Uh, that I don't, you know, I don't, we, don't, we don't think. And if I told you, yeah, next year Geno wasn't nearly as good. Like, you'd be like, okay, it happens. Um, if I told you next year, um, yeah, Mahomes is just like half the quarterback you would be surprised, right? So there is sort of this a um, lot of energy right now. Geno Smith is playing sort of above himself, but a lot of it's personnel. Kenneth Walker, that second round running back out of Michigan State who led college football in yards after contact is an absolute star. Big, strong, fast, first contact, never brings him down. They've hit on five or six draft picks who are all playing as rookies. And that's going to give them in the offseason with all those draft picks. Keep your eye on Seattle. They got two first, two seconds, a third, two fourths. So they're not paying Geno anything. What is he, less than a $6 million cap hit? So they're going to draft a quarterback, I would imagine, with one of those first round picks. But they're going to have some money to spend. And they are going to have, I mean, first through fourth draft picks are your best draft picks. So they're going to have seven really solid draft picks, first four rounds. Um, this isn't going away. Tyler Lockett still, DK Metcalf, very productive. O-line is set. I'd go by the best center on the market. But when I watch them, linebackers are rangy. Uh, Shelby Harris on the defensive front. Uh, I'd go spend money maybe on an edge rusher, another corner. Seattle doesn't appear to have a ton of holes and with a, some draft capital next year, Pete Carroll's relentless enthusiasm. Uh, you know, it, this is one of the things I love about the NFL. If you nail a draft, just one. The Jets nailed the draft. The Seahawks nailed the draft. You get four or five starters out of a draft and you're not paying them anything. Just gives you a lot of options potentially in the offseason, trade deadlines. Um, I, I think what Seattle is doing... I don't think Vegas quite has their arms around it. Maybe they make a U-turn in the second half, but I see so much more energy in their division with Seattle than I do with the Rams. I see mo so much more juice and consistency with Seattle than I do Arizona. Uh, Seattle is significantly healthier than San Francisco. Maybe they drop off. Again, Geno Smith's the quarterback. But if Kenneth Walker stays healthy, barring a, a, a string of injuries, I think Seattle's for real. It just cracks me up. They're an underdog again to Arizona. <laughs> They're a significantly better team than the Cardinals. So a fun Sunday. Enjoy the Chiefs and the Titans. I would take, what is it, 12, 12 and a half points with Tennessee. I don't like these big, everybody thought Philadelphia would win by blowout. They didn't. Everybody thought Buffalo would win by blowout. They didn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm I, maybe I'm wrong. Twelve and a half points. I mean, Bama was supposed to blow out LSU. They didn't. And let me just say before I go, are we now going to acknowledge for the first time Brian Kelly faced Nick Saban with equal talent? Not only beat him, out coached him. That's exactly why Brian Kelly left Notre Dame. Just going to, he wanted to end his career the last seven or eight years. Okay, give me Nick's talent, all right? Give me Kirby Smart's talent. Give me the kind of talent Lincoln Riley, Ryan Day can get. 
you know, bigger cities, more attractive to high school stars. Really loved seeing Brian Kelly. Okay, can be a little cringy on the internet, but I loved seeing him pull off in one of the best college football games, uh, certainly late, I've seen in a long time. Instant reaction. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.